I am an average, ordinary human being. I used to say I'm below average, but the fact is I don't think that's really true. I actually think everybody's born with giftedness. Now, what is your gift? It's the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Your gift will make room for you. Stop trying to be something you ain't gifted at. All of you have this gift. Identify it. You're wasting your time pursuing your passion. Stop tripping. If you fry chicken better than everybody you know, you ought to be somewhere frying chicken. You know the story of Marie Callender's? She worked for a diner that was going out of business. It was her only job. She was a single mother. She needed that job, but the diner was going to close. So she went to the owner of the diner and said, let me bake one of my pies and see if I can help you make a little money. He said, whatever, bring it in. He, she bought one pie in. They sold every slice. The next day, so many people asked for the pie, she had to make four pies. She made so many pies at this store that she eventually saved her money and put a commercial oven in her house. The dude's shop, he ain't selling hamburger no more. All he's selling is them damn pies. Marie Callender now has over 120 restaurants. When you figure out what those gifts are, you use them in the service of other people, you start living a pretty blissful life. It didn't take very long for me to find out what my gifts were. It's not IQ. I'm not the strongest dude in the world. I'm not the funniest dude in the world. But I am a pretty good communicator and I'm a really good listener. I love being present with people. And one of my gifts is I sincerely care about people. And you ought to be thinking about what your gifts are. I ask high performers, even like you guys, what's your giftedness? And you'd have a hard time telling me. Like for me, my, and my, we just did an IQ test in my family. I was fourth out of four people in my own house. I've been able to identify what my gifts are. I can transfer energy to people. I will outwork your ass. Those are gifts. So I always had these gifts that were mine. You've got yours. If you'll take an inventory of what they are, you'll be a more wealthy, productive person. I've been able to build a significant nine-figure net worth in my life, and I'm a goober. So I want you to think if a goober dude like me can end up doing that stuff, what could you accomplish? I'm a really goofy dude. I've always wanted to be somebody. Anybody relate to that? Say yes or no. I don't want to be. There's a bunch of jokers want to be somebody. I need to be somebody. Are you like that or not? I needed to be somebody. I wasn't playing with my life. When I was 30 years old, I had my first heart attack. So I might not be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest, none of that crap, but I will outwork your ass and I flat out want it more than you. But I've always wanted to be somebody. You probably heard that term, fake it till you make it. Any of you ever done that before? My first job, I was an electrician. Then I was a bus boy at the whole enchilada. That was an upgrade because they let me go as an electrician because I couldn't show up to work and get there by 6 a.m. And then I worked at an orphanage that changed my life. And then I became in the financial business and got wealthy. There's nothing about me. So I wanted to be rich. I started in a financial company. I'm like, hey, I can't be driving around like I had a Honda CRX. So I thought, man, I need to drive a Mercedes for people to take me damn serious. So I'm reading the penny saver and it says kit car Mercedes. 1997 Mercedes Benz six, a 600 convertible kit car that's built on an 88 Chrysler LeBaron frame. I'm not playing with you. I did this. I lived in that car for two years. That's the story of me wanting to be somebody. So I don't know where you're at right now. But are you slightly ahead of a Velcro together Mercedes? Yes or no? Yes? Now, what did I become? What, what changed with me where things changed? I read a book called Selling the Dream by a guy named Guy Kawasaki about that same time. Guy Kawasaki was the guy that sort of marketed Macintosh for Apple. I'm very familiar with what made that company work. They had a dude that led that company who was a crazy man named Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs didn't have a high IQ. He was an intense, psycho, crazy. He was a great storyteller. Write this down. The greatest leaders are evangelical about their cause. They are cause-oriented leaders. To the extent that you'll be a great father is to the extent that you can become evangelical about the cause and the mission your family's on. I'm constantly telling my children, we're gonna do something awesome. Since my son was a little boy, every night he go to bed, you're a leader, you're a gladiator, you're the greatest of all time, Max. I tell my daughter that all the time. Why? No one told me that crap when I was growing up. So what do those leaders have in common? If we go back and look at there, what does Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, my dumbass, what do we all have in common? 
in different ways they became evangelical about their mission and their cause and their company. What's an evangelist do? A person who seeks to convert others, a zealous advocate of a cause. That's what an evangelist does. You must speak about these things, write about these things. When your people get around you, it's infectious and repetitive, and you don't tire of saying it over and over and again and again, because I'm relentless about it. Why? Because our obsessions become our possessions. So if you want to do something, if you've thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there, that you're going to get started right now. Do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. Always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But if you really begin to think about what you think about on a regular basis, most of you are thinking about what you're worried about, you're afraid of, and what you're concerned or anxious about. You don't take control about what you're putting in your mind. When you're intentional about something, it loses its power over you. Once you're aware you're doing something, it can't affect you like it can when you're not aware. But you have an emotional home. You have a series of emotions you live with regularly, don't you? Those emotions could be bliss, ecstasy, passion, joy, peace, faith, but they could also be worry, stress, anger, anxiety, aren't they? And because you've done it over and over again, even though you know they don't serve you, you will find a way on a very regular basis to get those damn emotions. The quality of your emotions is going to be the quality of your life. All of you this year wrote down a bunch of things you want to achieve. You and I have gotten pretty good at achieving things we put our mind to, haven't we? Including the negative things. Now, since you're so good at getting what you want, what if you set an outcome to begin to achieve certain emotions on a regular basis? Because what you've done is you've deluded yourself into thinking, if I can get five million in the bank, if I get that hot so-and-so girl, then I'll have those emotions I want. That ain't how it works. I want you to have a bunch of stuff. I want you to have a bunch of achievement. But if you'd start to become more intentional, I'm gonna find some peace every day. I'm gonna find some solitude every day. Because you're not getting out of here alive. You ain't getting out of here alive. Why don't you start to be a little happier? A little bit more giving, man. You'd be so happy you did. The fact is the strongest men are the ones who are willing to give joy, give passion, give peace to people. Those are the strongest men in the world, right? We've all been wired a little bit differently. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna cut the crap. I'm gonna get you emotional. I'm gonna give you a secret. I think I'm the way I am because of what I watched my dad do. I wasn't, I'm not an alcoholic, but my dad was a dude who get angry pretty quick, get stressed pretty quick. So your life may look a whole lot different and maybe the external part of your life's not like it. But what about the internal part? Has it been all it's been cracked up to be to get where you are? Or didn't you think you'd feel better about yourself by the time you got here? And your kids, you know when you go to one of your kids' Little League games, there's 25 kids out there, nine on each side plus the dugout, which kid do you see? You see your little dude, don't you? Well, guess what? All they see is you. They love you because you're dad, but at some point are they proud of you? Are you a man making a difference in the world? And you know what they want more than anything than you to be all this other stuff? Is dad happy? And they know when you're lying. They don't see anybody else. The whole prism of the world of what they think they can experience, you're providing them. And it's not the stuff, it's the emotions. Why don't you just give yourself a break? Why don't you just be a little happier right now? You can do that right now. In this moment, you can intend to decide that you're just going to begin to see things. You have a, what if you started to filter into that things that just brought you bliss and peace and happiness? You were born to do something awesome. You were also born to be happy. And you think, man, if I start having all of this happiness crap you're talking about, I'm gonna lose my drive. That's what keeps me working. That's what you think. I used to think it too. There's a difference between happiness and satisfaction. You can be simultaneously incredibly blissful and still totally dissatisfied. Here's what happened to me. I was building a mansion and I'm all wound up one day. And I walk in, there's all these guys probably in the country illegally. They were working on my kitchen, right? These guys are making no money. They've left their families. I'm walking into my dadgum mansion I'm building with my wife and my baby, pissed off about some call I just had. And I look over, they got mariachi music playing. They're dancing and laughing as they're doing their job. And I thought to myself, if life were counted by the emotions we experience, they're kicking my ass right now. These guys have nothing and they find a way to get joy. Don't lose the emotional part of your life just to go win and get more stuff.